Africa must forget about democracy. Wow. Yes. Africa must forget about democracy. And go switch, switch. Africa must go back to monarchy. The ruling systems in the world that have worked perfectly has been monarchy. Africa is not at the age of democracy. Democracy is being sold to us. We bought into it, but really, it's not working for us. Wow. I just want to say, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I'm back again with another mind-blowing episode. Africans are genius, whether you like it or not. And I must conclude that, in fact, I brought one of the best projects ever on YouTube. That is Africa to the world, telling the positive African stories by an African. Africans are genius once again. Just look behind me. This was done by an African. And he built this with just waste wood. I mean, he's so lucky that he's not from my village. Like we use those woods for charcoal. But he is using it to, I mean, adding value to waste wood. That is incredible. Hey, if you want to get blown away every single day, all you need to do is to subscribe and be part of this awesome family. And I've heard that most of you don't like the video. Change your ways. Before you watch any video of Watermaya, do me a favor and like the video. Share it to your friends and family. Let's grow together. Come with me and let's go meet this brother who is adding value to Wastewood. My brother. Hey, my man. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. All right. Um, can I sit down? Yeah, you can sit down. Because you look like a king, you know? Oh, no, no. Make yourself comfortable, <laughs> you know? Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. My brother, has anyone ever told you that you're genius? Yeah, a few people, but I don't think I believe it. I just think that I'm an average African man, you know, walking through the continent and doing what I can do. You know what? You're amazing. And I'm impressed of what you've been able to do. I mean, adding value to the continent. But I just want to know who you are, I mean, where you're from, and tell me your story. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Well, my, my name is Yabwate. Mm -hmm. That's my real name. But uh, I go by the name Zozo, which is Z-O-H-Z-O-H. Zebra okay. on highway, zebra on highway. Yes. Um, You're a zebra? Yeah, I'm a zebra. I'm black and white. <laughs> You know, because I like to tell as it is. Okay. You know, it is, it is either I'm for you or I'm against you. I don't like to stand in between and get confused and don't know what I'm doing. No, I'm very straight. Wow. So that's why I'm zebra. I'm just black and white. Yeah. You were born and raised in Ghana? I uh, born and raised in Ghana. And then I disappeared somewhere along the line. You disappeared? Yes, I disappeared. How? Um, I went to the other part of the world, the end, which is down under, a country called New Zealand. Oh, okay. Yes, and I lived there for but maybe 14 to 15 years. What took you to New Zealand? Um, I initially went there to school. Okay. Yeah, and then somewhere along the line I stayed and I became a wandering adventurer. Okay. Trying to, you know, seek knowledge and understand the world better. So I ended up staying there and I enjoyed it. I did a lot of stuff over there. So I was heavily involved with music. Mm. So I was quite very heavy in the creative and performing arts. And I, I had a band called Zozo. And the band was a, an Afrobeat band, which was inspired by Fela Kuti. Mm. So um, after a while, I decided that I needed to get back to the motherland as well. But and you told me that you were enjoying your life in New Zealand. Yeah. Why would you leave such an enjoyment? You yeah. Know, Kitty said, I'll go kill you with enjoyment. enjoyment, enjoyment. You know, living that all life over there and return to the motherland. I mean, what brought you here? Yeah, I, it wasn't like I wasn't enjoying the motherland before I went to New Zealand. I think going to New Zealand was another uh, way of getting more knowledge. I'm a seeker of knowledge. Mm. Asante people call this type of hair mpese mpese. And mpese mpese, ubi pese nse mua, as you say. It's a seeker of knowledge, a pese nse so I like to seek knowledge and I was always wondering to add something to myself. Mm. So even though I was enjoying there, it came to a point that I felt that I needed to get back to Africa because I had so much that I have gained that I can come here to influence Africa, to take Africa to the next level. Which year was this? This was um, 2016. And then you returned to yeah. the motherland. Yeah, returned to the motherland. And I went back 
2017 for about only two months and I came back again because, you know, moving to Africa is not an easy piece. Mm. So if you take yourself out of Africa for 14 years and then all of a sudden you want to come back, sometimes it's a fantasy, but then when the reality kicks in, you realize that, no, bro, it's not an easy journey. So, I mean, rhythmically, I changed my template. And to come back to this template, I needed to revisit how I'm going to keep it up. So keeping it up over here mm. was a bit hard. So I had to go back, refuel a little bit, <laughs> and then come back. Uh, I am in it, and I'm doing it slowly. Even every day is a challenge. But then life without challenge too becomes very boring. Wow. So for me, it was a calling for me to come back here. And I came back trying to pursue the music over here. Mm. But I realized that it was a different rhythm that I was needed for a different thing. You, you couldn't fit into the music space? Uh, I think that my sort of style of music and what is happening on the continent now does not really flow together. The people are not ready for me yet because I'm coming more from a sort of um, a music with live music background and big festival type of music where the people here are still, you know, doing computer synthesized style of music so and uh, my, my music style had a lot of African uh, uh, indigenous style to it I mean I play almost every drum from different tribes in Ghana wow. there is no piece that I can listen to that I cannot replicate it and that is the other creative side of me wow. yeah and I'm even as I am doing wood every day I'm still researching into music and I, wow. I'm keeping that for the next generation Anytime they need some wisdom, they can come back to me and I can tell them a story. I mean, what you're doing in Ghana right now is that you are converting Westwood into what? Yes. Houses. Houses. I mean, household furniture. Household all. furniture, you know, anything that, you know, if you uh, interior decoration, you have a hotel, you want somebody to come and, you know, change the beauty of it, you know, give it a unique look, you know, I use the Westwood for that. What is the inspiration behind it? Well... You know, it's a simple story. Okay, can you tell me? And the that? simple story is about my sister. Wow. So, I love wood. And I've always played with wood, but didn't realize that I was a woodman. <laughs> when I went to New Zealand, I took a drum with me. Okay. And the drum was made with wood. I remember that when I was young, anytime I would run to go and listen to Bobobo music, I would be playing my wooden bed. Mm. So wood has always been part of me, but I did not realize it until when I told my sister that I want her to cook because she's been to a chef school. And I said, cook, and let's see if people will buy it. In the neighborhood, don't go work for any big, you know, restaurant or anything, just cook in the house. And then she started. Bang, first week food was gone. Bang, second week food was gone. And I was like, whoa. And I see a lot of pallet around. I see a lot of waste wood around, which was never converted into anything. Mm. So I told myself, I'm going to use this piece to create something very simple for her in the neighborhood wow. so that it adds value to the cooking. It, add, it makes it cleaner, make it nicer. So we developed our first piece. And when we developed the first piece, that became the magic. Tell me one thing that you did that blew people's mind. Right there. Wow. Right there. This is the original piece. This is the piece that is taking the story around the world. What, is, what makes it so unique? Then? Well, the thing is, you know what? It's, it's mobile. It's a bar. It's a little bar, but it's not little. It's big at the same time. Because you know what? Look at this. So it is like a cocktail bar. And it has an ice chest inside, okay? You know what I mean? So you have all your drinks and stuff over here. You have a storage space over here. You can display other things over here. You can always put it back again. And then it has an opening of a boot of storage as well. I mean, really, if you go to any bar, cocktail bar, anywhere, you know, beach or whatever it is, you can use this to serve about 300 people, just like that. Just like that? Just like that. You have to release the bricks, release the bricks, and then, you know, you can wheel it around. You can wheel it around. You can make a whole 360 turn. This is it. This is what the hotels need. You know what I mean? 
you have a buffet at a hotel in a conference place or whatever it is you want to be able to move the stuff around and serve people just like you have been in a plane you know how you know you go the alleyway exactly. and they put some stuff through yeah. yeah which one is this one is it a kitchen or something this is the second piece of the story so after this one i decided that i need to revolutionize the hospitality industry to make people have an easy access of being able to sell food food that can come to you you don't always have to go to them so this is the second piece this is mobile kitchen, mobile kitchen. this is mobile kitchen you look at the frame this look at all the metal work everything was done in ghana here it wasn't made nowhere everything was designed by myself put together with my other teammates and this is what we achieve you look inside and you're gonna see there is a whole bar inside there yeah. okay we have like a small tap that you can use to you know pour your wine through there is a water tank in there the top has a solar you know so off grid like let's say you know in the middle of nowhere in your village and you take this stuff over there in the night you can still set up lights will be on music will be playing now now will you accept the fact that you're a genius <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah so we were serving out of it you know but when the covid came through everything slowed down so we decided to pack some of our stuff inside here but this is it you know this is how it works so i mean you stand here there's so many compartments to this place that if i want to open it to you it will take the whole day but you can imagine having a house and a kitchen this is what it represents all from pallets all from waste wood wood that is meant for other people using it for firewood and all that no zozo and we are right in the pallet kitchen okay we are at the pallet kitchen and the pallet kitchen is in Osu and this is where you can find me as my chill out time good 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 food but maybe next time we can talk about that my brother yeah, man. I mean the way you're talking I just want to know are you doing this alone yeah I'm doing this alone I'm doing this alone trying to um impact the entire Africa I'm not impacting only Ghana you know I was in Uganda in February and it was also based on waste food I've been in Burkina based on you know waste food so um but i would need people to come and support and i want to train as many people that i can i want to you know give my brain to them and um the people that are working for you train them or they're just Ghanaian carpenters that you decided to well uh work. yeah they have very minimal knowledge about carpentry okay. so what i'm doing is i am the one really doing the training now okay yes um this guy here is not a carpenter he's actually an electrician Wow. But he got an interest in it, and then I said, "You come, and then I'll, you know, I'll take you to a different level." So. And uh, how many people have you employed so far in here? Cas I mean, casually, I have a lot of people, but permanently, I have only these two people with me. So when I say casually, it's because I build outside. So anytime I'm going, I call them, and then we have a location. We meet over there, we do our job, and then they go. But if it is consistent, then they become permanent. If it's not consistent, you know, on and off. Before the COVID, we were four, but when the COVID came in. Then everything went down, so some people had to go. I mean, you moved from New Zealand to Ghana. So yes. definitely you have a message for your fellow brothers and sisters that were born here, left the continent, now living in, in the West. Yeah. And if you have a message to tell them to come back, what would that message be? Well, I would like everybody to come back. I would like everybody to come back because you know what? Africans in Africa cannot build Africa alone. We those in the diaspora need to come back here so that we can blend. You see, when you have the transatlantic experience, mm. it becomes another added advantage. Mm. You come here and let's put our brain together and rebuild Africa. Wow. But coming down here, you have to be a bit prepared. There are tough times, there are challenges, but it's all part of life because this is what we need to go through to make Africa a better place to live. When you go to the West, life is not easy there either. But the people over there, have built their own country that we go and enjoy. I mean, what are the kind of the challenges that you faced when you were in the West? Oh, uh, brother. I mean, weather alone, the weather alone for me, sometimes to wake up to go to work is hard. Because it's so cold, you know? It's so cold. So what do you do? But you have to go. You're paying rent every week. If you don't have money, the week comes, you don't have money, what are you gonna do? You got me? So, um, you know, it's a different template. It's a different rhythm. But the people there were born there, they are used to that rhythm. We were born here, we're used to a different rhythm. So even though we've gone there to learn everything, let's come back to an influence here. You see, if you watch the British, okay, they've been everywhere to colonize. But what happened? They make Britain great. 
because they took different different things from different countries and they took it to their country and they make it great. So we Africans, we've been everywhere now. Let's come back and make Africa great. Wow. And um, if you have a message for Africans on the continent, what will it be? Africans on the continent to tell you the truth, they need to be serious. How serious? They need to be serious in terms of their mindset of work. We can't build Africa with any like a desical attitude, no. We have to be serious about our work. We have to revisit the old Africa. We keep blaming our ancestors, but when you look around, it looks like our ancestors did better. So what are we doing? We need to do better than them. So Africans need to be serious. The politics of Africa, that is the main thing that needs to stop. That every African must have a conscience for the next 200 years to tell themselves that my children would have to grow up over here and have everything just like the way America have it. It seems like you're, you're talking from the heart, which means that when you came to Africa, it was not that easy for you. Bro, it's not easy every day. I mean, what? But I will not give up. I know you won't give up. <laughs> but what was the major challenge that you faced when you came here? Yeah. Major? Yeah. Everything is too much unstructured. Everything is too much everywhere and makes life so hard. From point A to point B, it's never straight. Too many dishonest people, it makes it very hard. That is the challenge that I face, that you can't really get things done the way it's supposed to be done. And what do you think is the way forward? The way forward? You want to really know that? Of course, we need solutions, not the problem always. Africa must forget about democracy. Wow. Yes. Africa must forget about democracy. And go switch, switch. Africa must go back to monarchy. The ruling systems in the world that have worked perfectly has been monarchy. Africa is not at the age of democracy. Democracy is being sold to us. We bought into it, but really, it's not working for us. We need a father who can look after us for a long time that understand a certain set of discipline that we can follow. That's where Africa needs. Africa does not need this up and down, demo crazy. No, we don't need it. Do you think Africa is the future? Africa is the future. Africa is the future and Africa will always be the future because you see, the land of Africa is a land that has been in existence since creation for a long time. I mean, first Homo sapiens were Africans. So this is the cradle of humanity. This is where everybody is gonna come back to. So, uh, this is the heaven on earth, wow. but Africans themselves don't know it. That's why we run around everywhere looking for the heaven and looking for the heaven in the Bible. No, it's not there. It's right here. Me and you are in heaven. Even when you, you throw maize on the concrete, it germinates, right? Even the bird, when they shit, you know, it germinates. Why? Because the land is so fertile. 365 days rainfall and sunshine in Africa. Our people go hungry. It means something is wrong. We can plant food everywhere. We don't need to go nowhere. But it's a step that we needed. We needed this experience to go out there, to come back. So if you are still there, you need to be here. Because this is where we are meant to be. The umbilical cord yeah. is buried over here. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's where we need to be. Wow. You know what? What you're saying, which means Africa is not just the future. Yeah. Africa is the past, yes. present, yes. and the future. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing with me. <laughs> and um, if you really want to reach out to him, I'm going to put his um, email um, numbers on the screen so that you reach out to him and come support his business. You know, as we always do it, it's always by force to support a brother's business. It's your boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. Don't forget to like the video, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for talking to me.